Hello and be welcome the followers of Humanities Rock. We are very pleased today and very happy because we are presenting you a MSCA fellow, Dr. Francesco Toncic. Hello, Francesco. Hi. <laughs> Please be welcome <laughs> with us. <laughs> Francesco, um, his host organization is Department of History at the Faculty of Arts, University of Ljubljana here in Slovenia. Dr. Toncic is investigating within the domain of the project Public Health in Transition, Healthcare at the End of the Habsburg Empire. His main supervisor is Professor Marta Virginela. She also works at the Faculty of Arts, University of Ljubljana in Slovenia. So, Francesco, again, be welcome. Dobrodošli. Hvala lepa. Lepo pozdravljeni med nami. How did your research career begin? Well, uh, first of all, uh, it begins in my own town. Trieste first. Ah, Trieste, that's yeah, great. Yeah, very some... close to Slovenia, very close to Ljubljana. Absolutely. Trzačan uh, sem. Trzačan. Uh, mm -hmm. Triestino. Triestino. Triestino uh, is uh, italianske družine, uh, istarske. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, born and raised uh, in Trieste first. Uh, after attending uh, high school as uh, in a language, foreign language uh, gymnasium, I decided to, uh, yeah, to enroll myself in the history uh, department. And there I spent the first, uh, in Trieste, first, uh, I spent the first three years. Although already in the third years of my bachelor, I decided to move to Vienna as, first of all, as um, Erasmus student. Mm -hmm. Thanks also my the support of my intellectual mom or one of my intellectual moms, Tulia Catalan, um, who supported me in this decision, and she was also the supervisor in Trieste in Thurste. And I spent uh, a first difficult but adventurous, uh, um, challenging year in Vienna. I liked uh, so much there. And I always had actually the idea to move to Vienna when I was, since when I was 14, 15, mm -hmm. then I decided, okay, that's uh, mm -hmm. the way I have to follow. And then after getting the, the bachelor, I decided to stay there in the, for the master. I did, I attended, uh, studied uh, in history for uh, uh, Eastern Europe and contemporary history. Uh, but meanwhile, I was, uh, in the same time when I was still writing my, my master thesis uh, about anti-Slavism in Trieste mm -hmm. in the 19th century, I got a position, I was very lucky, uh, and I got already the position in, as PhD student mm -hmm. in Tübingen, in south of Germany, in Baden-Württemberg. And uh, I started this new adventure in a new country, a new European country. Um, Tübingen uh, is a special uh, a city, a special environment, one of the oldest German-speaking uh, German universities. And, and there I had the opportunity as historian to step into anthropology, historical mm -hmm. anthropology. And there started a, a way of hybridization, uh, methodological and theoretical method, uh, hybridization. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Hi. Very nice. <laughs> and uh, that actually, that was the time when I met Marta mm -hmm. Virginella. And uh, she went also to, she was so kind, she, accept, she, has, she accepted our uh, invitation to come to, to Tübingen. Uh, for a conference, and then we stayed in in uh, in contact. After my PhD, I got another a post PhD for one year in Paris uh, with uh, Université de Paris Créteil. But I mean, as we know, was uh, was March was March uh, 2020. Oh, okay. Exactly. Pandemic. Everything. Pandemic. Pandemic. Thing. So we didn't uh, so so uh, so uh, away uh, with this uh, with this uh, I was 
I was unlucky in this unlucky sense. Unlucky in this sense, yes. But, but lucky side, because you're in Ljubljana now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Thanks to the pandemic too, maybe, because <laughs> I had so much time, free time, to be by myself at home, speaking a lot also with Marta Virginella. And together we uh, figure out uh, a way to uh, find, uh, yeah, findings uh, for a collaboration, a possible collaboration. And here we are. For with... this project. Exactly, exactly. But let's go back to the beginnings. How, how, how did it happen that you became so interested in history, young, young boy and history? Exactly. Why is history your field of interest? Yeah, that's the point. Uh, <laughs> um, actually, I started already to be fascinated mm -hmm. in history or in stories, in the narration of uh, stories uh, in the family already. Um, hearing uh, of, um, from narrations and narratives and uh, memories of my oldest uh, grandfather mm -hmm. and also of my parents because uh, both families are from Istria, mm -hmm. from two different uh, uh, parts of Istria, one from the more Slavic part, uh, uh, Slovenian, Croatian, who knows, and the other one from the Venetian part of, of Istria. And in that sense, I was fascinating how these two uh, cultures actually came together in a family, always not in a conciliating way, also fighting maybe um, under the skin, and, but always finding a way to uh, coexist and even to um, have a family together. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was a point uh, that fascinated me, hearing the memories of my grandfather during the fascist uh, period, during the, in Istria, during the Second World War, uh, hearing about strategies he found as Italian soldiers in order to survive to this big ep epochal, epochal uh, events mm -hmm. like the Second World War, uh, and so on, and then also the, the leaving, uh, leaving Istria after the Second World War, finding a new life in Trieste, in Italy, and so on. I mean, I was always very fascinating, and I started also to be around 10, 12, 15, to be also a bit critic about mm -hmm. all these narrations, these narratives, mm -hmm. also full of nationalism, maybe, mm -hmm. national perspectives, at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I started to doubt also and to be critical about these things, these topics, and also asking myself which was actually the other perspective mm -hmm. of people involved in these big epochal events. And then step by step, I started to, yeah, to deconstruct mm -hmm. all these uh, mythical uh, nationalisms uh, and so on. And here we are. I mean. Yeah, the words that you use are very interesting, like um, the doubt, the perspective, the question. These are the, um, the foundings of any research, I guess. But what do you research? What are the goals of the project Public Health in Transition? What do you want to, to show us? Yeah, that's the question. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, as I said uh, shortly before, uh, up until now I was more focused on the 19th century, Habsburg monarchy, mm -hmm. understanding in, uh, in a multilingual uh, setting through different languages, Italian, uh, less Slovenian because my knowledge in Slovenian was uh, still very miserable, I would mm -hmm. say, but at least a German language and so on in order to understand how a system, a multinational system worked, and it was possible actually, mm -hmm. and how it uh, got damaged by also nationalisms. And now here we are. Um, now I'm stepping forward uh, from the 19th century, which was my comfort zone, and uh, now I'm challenging myself, uh, stepping forward into the 20th century, uh, after the First World War, 
uh, looking how it was possible to uh, destroy and to, to um, um, let's say, fragment something that was unique, uh, composite in itself, diverse in itself, like the Habsburg monarchy. But then, after November, December 1918, what happened with this unique system of uh, public health, hospitals, mm -hmm. um, physicians, patients, uh, their movement, uh, following the uh, changing of, this, of the, their movement and their decision where, where they have to be settled uh, or where they were settled themselves after, um, after this war, after the destruction of this, uh, of this common space of communication and uh, the system movement. and the system that exactly. existed, yes. Exactly. And when other systems were arising and where actually uh, new walls, new boundaries were uh, traced and settled and controlled among, uh, among uh, cities who were actually before interconnected, like mm -hmm. Trieste, Thirst, and Ljubljana, Laibach, uh, Graz, uh, Vienna. Gradet, Vienna, Vienna. Vienna, for instance. In that sense, I'm very interested to, to see how people reacted mm -hmm. in but the moment of um, mental or physical need. need That's yes. the... But why do you think this is relevant for nowadays? Yeah, well, first of all, because we are facing new wars in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have already faced, uh, when I was a child, I can remember the Yugoslavian war, which mm -hmm. was a shock, was mm -hmm. a shock. Now we are facing new uh, shocks. New yeah, new crisis. New crisis, new yeah. trauma. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, for instance, I, in order to answer to this uh, very tricky and interesting question, um, now I'm f uh, looking at the medical reports uh, from mental uh, hospitals in uh, Gorizia, Gorizia and Udine mm -hmm. after the First World War. Um, researching about shell shock and traumatic experiences or the consequences of facing dramatic and uh, traumatic uh, expositions to war in civilian uh, population, above all among women. Because if I ask you, uh, to you, uh, what do you think about shell shock? Maybe you automatically uh, connect shell shock with men, soldier, mm -hmm. army, uh, armies f uh, facing each other and clashing each other. Well, what uh, we can uh, still discover now from this uh, kind of uh, projects like mine or Marta's, mm -hmm. uh, the RC Irene mm -hmm. based uh, in a Filosofska, at the Filosofska Faculteta, there were actually general uh, traumatic experiences also shared by women. Of course. Living there, yeah. they couldn't escape. And uh, what I'm discovering are, are, are horrible things, obviously poor women that had no choice to escape from these turbinous uh, events that uh, hit them in the moment that came overnight, this, uh, this tragic modern, high modern and violent uh, event that yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, they were victims uh, as obviously. well, but, <laughs> involved in, in everything what happened. But. Exactly, but they weren't recognized as war victims. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Mm -hmm. And what can we uh, still learn? That actually war is something horrible in itself, but it's even, I would say, even worse uh, concerning the consequences in the long term. Mm -hmm period that's uh, that's something and that is general nobody is 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 spared mm -hmm. immune to 
to war. Yeah. 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 Uh, you were using the words again, very interesting, like challenging, discovering. And I would like to ask you as a his historian, how do you discover? How do you investigate? How do you do your work? Where do you gather your data, the crucial information that you use for developing your thesis, um, finding answers to your questions? How does it work? You go well, to museums, to art, um, yeah, travel is, is mm -hmm. and visit is, is an important uh, part of this, ab uh, absu uh, absolutely. In that sense, um, that's the point. Uh, I mean, I'm from Thirst, Trieste, but I'm very well connected to Ljubljana, to Gorizia, to Graz, uh, Vienna. So I have friends, uh, mm -hmm. uh, friends, friendships, uh, networking. Mm -hmm which helps me also to be an insider in mm -hmm. a certain way. So it's not just reading, it's also oh, networking yeah, all yeah, the yeah. time experience. with the live people. Yeah. It's also experience the territory where uh, those events uh, happened and mm -hmm. uh, devastated also those, uh, those territories. For instance, so many cases came, came from Berda Berda. Mm -hmm. And if you think, Berda is one of the most beautiful places on the earth. Yes, it's, it's the western so... part of western part of Slovenia. And if you think uh, back 100 years mm -hmm. ago, it was completely devastated by bombing and uh, by the first of the First World War. And it's quite unimaginable to think that beauty was completely destroyed, but in a certain way, it's always possible to rebuild this beauty. In that sense, uh, maybe there is a hope in that sense that humanity could always overcome these this mm -hmm. traumatic uh, experiences. And how do I research? I mean, uh, what I'm doing now is in is called, is labeled as individual uh, um, project. And actually is true because <laughs> uh, you are researching. It's a very lonely uh, job. Yes, I was going to ask you, are you lonely <laughs> sometimes or every oh, day yeah. maybe? Yeah. In your work, of course. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, I'm very lucky because I'm a good friend of myself in that sense. <laughs> you know how I'm... to be with yourself. That's exactly, great, yes. exactly. <laughs> but uh, sometimes you miss. The, the, the social part and uh, in that sense combining being alone because you have to be alone in a, in, a, in a library or in a above all in archives you can't you can't even speak sometimes mm. obviously and then you have to find strategies to be social to be into the society to be connected with not only colleagues uh, the faculty uh, supervisor, but also with friends and uh, relatives who are interested in what you do. And sometimes you discover that uh, facing them and speaking with them about what you have just uh, discovered uh, one day before, one hour ago. Uh, yeah. Help you to organize. That the, is the thinking. Yes. That is, and from the uh, most unsuspectable people, you receive the best suggestions. Maybe in finding new uh, new ways, new approaches. Data. Yeah, 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 too. yeah. In that sense, I try to be. In that sense, I'm trying to be what I learned in uh, under the uh, anthropologist, the cultural and historical anthropologist in Tübingen, thanks to my doctor father, Reinhard Jola in Tübingen, uh, to be open to every suggestion surrounds you and to lead a thick description, as uh, Geertz uh, uh, called it. It's not just a methodological way to find data, but it's concerning your position as researcher in what you are doing during your research and in your life, in that moment when you are researching. Be able to be receptive 
to all these uh, vibrations around you and to take advantage uh, of this, mm -hmm. in this sense. But I can imagine that not only receiving, also interpreting yeah. then the fact it's yeah. crucial yeah. for your work. Yeah, and yeah. for this reason I would say it's good to be uh, as uh, polyglot as possible. And you are, yes. No, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've, heard you, <laughs> I've heard you talking German, Italian, uh, improving your Slovenian. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. And that's a, a, a relevant part of being here and choosing also Slo uh, Slovenia, uh, Filosofska Fakulteta in Ljubljana, because uh, for me it's, it's, it's a consequent decision in my uh, cursus studiorum, in my develop of myself too, mm -hmm. uh, because after, okay, Italian, okay, mother tongue, mm -hmm. uh, whatever, after German, after English and so on, that is actually the Slovenian, the knowledge of Slovenian language is a big lack. It was at least a big, a big lack and a big shame also as a uh, Terjacan. Uh, then I had to uh, overcome this or to fill in this, this lack mm -hmm. and now here I am. <laughs> Great. You were talking about I'm all the time following your words, you see. Thank you. <laughs> and you, and you use the word beauty. Okay. And here it comes a question related also to Marie Sklodowska Kiri. She said, I am among those who think that science has great beauty. Francesca, do you agree with this phrase? Yeah, uh, sure, who wouldn't not, but um, I'm thinking, the beauty is something subjective, <laughs> or it's just a question, is it something subjective or objective? I think it's more subjective, it's, the beauty is in our eyes, in our mind, and in order to fulfill this task, to make science beautiful or full of beauty, you have to, um, to commit yourself to the idea that you have to be beautiful in researching and to propose also, to contribute to this beauty. Um, question is how? Um, I think through passion, to um, seriosity in, in following what actually the size is, to be humble also, um, to be able to, to doubt uh, what we said before, to doubt towards also yourself, your capacities, to be able to be also strategic. If I can do this now, maybe I can be ally with somebody else who is able to help me in go forward. And this is actually a part of this beauty of science, to be interconnected with also people, with other people who share this passion and to find uh, common ways to find this beauty, maybe, together. Alone is not possible, I would say. Because okay. it's difficult, it's difficult. Wow, Francesca, thank you for your you. beautiful words, your beautiful thinking. You're just great. No, come on. You are great that you are offering me this way. No, too. really, thank you so much for this interview. We will stay with uh, your words. So science is beautiful. Hvala lipa, Francesca. Hvala lipa za vabilo. Hvala. <laughs>